Hello everyone. In the previous video, we had stopped at this point in our solution of the pin pinned uh, beam under axial load. Uh, and uh, I suspect that some of you may be wondering as to, uh, as to the question uh, whether we had actually achieved our goal of finding the critical load. Because as I had mentioned in the previous video, uh, we, our goal was twofold. Uh, first of all, we wanted to find the critical load and then to find the deflection. So uh, this particular video will be about finding the deflection, but I just want to go back and, uh, and clarify that the, the step that we had found uh, at the end, this particular expression, that is actually giving us the critical load. Not because we have, uh, we have managed to express this as a ratio of P by P Euler, but because we have, we have now a recipe of finding out K and K remember is nothing but uh, sine alpha by 2. Uh, so our K is equal to sine alpha by 2. And please don't forget that we are also working under the, under the condition that alpha is greater than 0, which is why at S equal to L we had taken theta is equal to minus alpha to denote that it is indeed a negative angle. Okay, so what, what I want to emphasize here is that given a particular value of P, as I had mentioned earlier, we are able to find out the value of K. But how does that tell us that P is the critical load? Well, you see, if indeed you are able to find out a value of K and correspondingly a value of alpha greater than zero, then it means that your beam that our beam or rod has indeed buckled okay the fact the very fact that we are able to find out a solution uh, a solution which is telling us that we do have a non-zero value of alpha present here a non-zero value of theta equal to alpha present here at s equal to zero and correspondingly theta equal to minus alpha at s equal to l it basically tells us that uh, the beam has buckled so it means that the value of P that, is, that has been given, that is a, a, a value of P which is, uh, which is uh, causing buckling. Now, does that mean that there will be possible values of P for which this thing is not going to give us any correct solution for K? And in fact, that is so. Okay, so if you take this value of P, which is substantially lower this P Euler, suppose, okay, then you will find out that you will not get up, not, not get solutions for k by trying to solve this thing, this entire equation. You will not get solutions for k such that this thing, this alpha is uh, greater than zero. Okay, so that is going to indicate to us that for that for such a value of p, it is not buckling. Okay, so that uh, with this concept out of the way, let us proceed towards the actual um, steps which will. Uh, uh, give us some idea about the deflection and this is very important uh, because uh, as we had seen in the earlier approximate theory uh, that was unable to give us any estimate about the deflection we had to stop at the point where uh, where we only found out the critical load okay so what we are going to do is go back to this equation we are going to go back to this uh, very first equation that we were dealing with e i d square theta d s square plus e sine theta equal to zero and now our motivation is to look at uh, is to find a way for uh, to figure out the deflection so first of all you note that uh, you note that sine theta as we have so noted earlier the sine theta is equal to dw ds okay so if we if we just if we just substitute it back here in this equation this is ei d square theta ds square plus p dw ds equal to zero and this thing is now uh, if we if we integrate it uh, it once we are going to get ei d theta ds plus p w is equal to some constant okay so previously all we have already used the constant c so maybe we can take this as maybe some, some c c2 okay it doesn't matter it, it's just a constant 
okay so uh, the the condition that we are going to use now is that at s equal to 0 we have already seen uh, we had already found that e i d theta d s is equal to zero, and this follows from the from the understanding that at s equal to zero, theta is not specified. So from the boundary condition that either e i d theta d s equal to zero or theta uh, is specified. Because theta is not specified at s equal to zero, we had to conclude that e i d theta d s equal to zero. All right. Uh, the other condition we also have is that at s equal to zero, w is equal to zero. Because at s equal to zero, we have a pinned end. So also we have uh, at s equal to l, and which means basically that the deflection w is equal to zero. Okay. So if we substitute these, uh, this e i d theta d s equal to zero here and w equal to zero, what we obtain is that t two is equal to zero, which means that uh, uh, or maybe I can just go to the next page here, which basically means that uh, e i d theta d s plus p w that is going to be equal to zero because that constant uh, we have just found out that c2 is equal to 0. Now our motivation here or our objective here is to find out w. So let's see if we can do that. This is w is equal to minus ei by p d theta ds. Now we have already in our hand an expression for d theta ds if we just look back a few slides. So you see here, we do have an expression here. Uh, this is d theta ds uh, in this particular form. Uh, so, uh, so let me try to let me just uh, uh, or maybe I'll just repeat the I, I'll I'll just write it again. Okay. Okay, so minus e i by p is here, and uh, what I have for uh, d theta d s from earlier is uh, just take a look here. So there is a minus here. This 2, the square root of 2 and this square root of 2, uh, that gives me a 2 outside the square root and then I have a square root of p by e i. Okay. So, uh, if I just copy this thing, I have to modify this anyway. All right. Uh, so you see what we are going to get from here. Uh, and please note that uh, this thing is going to come with a plus because there was a minus sign here. Uh, so ultimately, what we are getting here is a twice, and that twice is because the square root of two multiplied by this square root of two, and then square root of e i by p, and then square root of sine square alpha by 2 minus sine square theta by 2. All right. Which means that uh, I can write this as pi by p and uh, uh, you please note that this sine alpha by 2 is just k so this is k square minus uh, I can of course write the sine theta by 2 also in terms of uh, the k and the phi but uh, I can just keep it like this okay so you see we are at a stage where we can say uh, uh, 
that we have complete knowledge about the W. Why is that? It is because you see this P is given to us. Okay, there is no problem there. The theta also we have complete information about it because theta is supposed to go from alpha to minus alpha. So uh, as theta goes from alpha to minus alpha to zero, we can find the corresponding values of W. And please note that when I say that theta goes from alpha to minus alpha, uh, this alpha here, uh, it is something very much known to us. Because in the previous step of our solution procedure, uh, we had found out the value of k, which means which means that we have indeed found out the value of alpha. Okay, so given a value of p, uh, once once you, you know, once you start out with the value of p, you first find out the value of alpha, and then you uh, then you come to this formula for the w, and then just uh, uh, go from theta equal to alpha to the minus alpha, and then you will be able to find out the corresponding values of w, which is nothing but the deflection. So now you have in your hand. Uh, a complete recipe for finding the deflection given a load and this is something I emphasize again was uh, was not present in our earlier approximate theory when we were uh, when we were making approximations about the curvature uh, of the of the beam as well as the uh, shortening of the beam so on that note uh, we are at uh, at an end of our discussion of the solution of this elastica problem uh, and it'll be interesting to see uh, how this uh, solution is actually implemented uh, in symbolic Python. Uh, so I'll see if I can make a video about that. But uh, uh, with this, uh, we are more or less at an end of our chapter on uh, beam theory uh, involving both the bending and buckling. There can be uh, so many other um, uh, discussions possible, but in the interest of time and the scope that uh, our course uh, allows us, uh, I'll have to uh, end it here and the next chapter will be on uh, classical plate theory but I'll, I'll try to see if I can make a video uh, using the Jupyter Notebook uh, for the solution uh, to, uh, to actually illustrate the solution procedure for this uh, Elastica problem. Alright, on that note, thank you very much.